things do you guys need to do in Duluth this weekend to have success? Well, I think we've got to keep momentum of the good things that we've been doing over the course of the last few weeks here. Um, uh, play with and without the puck, but I think we have to kind of go back to how we've had a little bit of success uh, at the frozen faceoff against Duluth and kind of go back to that game plan a little bit and and uh, and make sure that uh, you know we play that way. What did you like about that game in March? Well, I liked our pace. You know, I liked uh, the pace of our play. I think all, all the the players contributing. There were no passengers that game. Um, you know, it was a physical brand of a weekend. Uh, where two teams needed to win a game uh, to get in the tournament, and obviously they did because another there was a result uh, on the other end of the nation that went that way. But two teams that needed that win, and, uh, and and there had to be urgency and desperation in that game. How important was this last weekend for your team? Very important. You know, obviously coming out on a Friday night win, uh, taking the first step of you know taking care of business on a Friday night. But you know, Saturday night the game didn't really go our way. Uh, and a lot had to do with you know us putting a couple of pucks in our own net, but that didn't phase us. And I like I, I go back to you know the Western weekend on, on the Saturday night. You know we we didn't play as a team to to play catch up or chase the game. And I thought we uh, chased the game the right way uh, as a team and uh, and found a way to win. And and within that you know some of the older players stepping up, obviously Rhett Gardner stepping up, and making making some plays at the end to uh, to, to help us get that win. Over the last two seasons, a one and six record against Duluth. Uh, how do you? What makes them so difficult, maybe, to, to defeat? Well, I think you know when you really look at it, you know they're they're two very they, teams that closely mimic each other in the way they play and how they, you know, conduct themselves on the ice and and, and the way they present themselves. But I think the one thing is, is uh, you know we haven't got out to great starts against them and I think that's going to be the biggest thing is you know having a good start that first period of the first 20 minutes and being on our toes and you know having some puck possession you have two teams that are going after it that are one two in the nation in puck possession so uh, you know one team's going to have the puck and the other team isn't and we want to be that team that has the puck. Special teams were really working uh, this last weekend what what was working with that group and how much of a boost can that be for you? Well, if you're talking power play, uh, simplification of the power play. Uh, when you talk about simplifying the power play, it, it's, it's doing the things that are, that are very basic. And the basic things are playing fast, move, moving the puck quick, not holding the puck, surveying and looking for a play. It's quick puck movement. It's getting having a shot first mentality. Instead of just holding it and making six or seven passes, it's going to the net, a shot retrieve mentality. And I think the biggest thing is, is, is uh, just five guys being on the same page. And, uh, you know, again, it all starts with simplification and playing fast. Does that, does that confidence carry over then when you get back into it to NCHC play? Yeah, yeah, absolutely it does. And, you know, I think it's the last three games in a row we've scored two goals, I believe, in each game. And, uh, you know, that, 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 that helps facilitate success uh, of having confidence and momentum going into the next one. Now we're playing against a, a penalty kill that's one of the top in the nation. Uh, you know, they're ultra aggressive. And, again, we're going to have to make sure that everybody, all five guys, are, are working together to try to have success as far as generating not only a goal but trying to gain momentum off it. What do you guys like about Matt's maybe and what has he brought to the staff? Well, you know, it, he's, he's brought a lot to our, to our group here. You know, every, anytime you have a, a former player that has recently retired uh, that obviously has gone through your program and been a captain that has great leadership skills, you know, he provides, provides, provides a fresh outlook um, to different things. You know, as far as us being here for a while, we, we always have our own um, intentions, our own ideas of how to do things or, or, or what we see as a group. Now you see a fresh set of eyes looking at it with a different perspective that's just recently retired in the game. And, you know, the other part of it is he bridges the gap. And I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm really old because I am, but, uh, but, uh, he bridges the gap uh, from our young players to, to our coaching staff, which all of us are, are a little bit older, that he kind of bridges that communication gap or that, that generation gap uh, with our players. And I think that's a big deal. What has led you to guys to having them on the bench in the third periods? Um, I, I, I firmly believe it's, it's a case in point of letting him watch the game develop up top, but then also bringing him and, and giving some uh, bench management side of it. Uh, and again, when I say bench management, he, he's very limited in what he can do. He, he's basically a set of eyes that go, that can talk to me on the bench and uh, and provide a, uh, uh, some input or his uh, analysis of what's going uh, live uh, uh, on the ice. So I think it's a little bit of helping me as a coach, but also, uh, you know, Giving him more experience as a coach and seeing uh, seeing the game from from the uh, the ice standpoint versus the press box. 
On the freshman have really stepped up this month. They've tallied 15 points. Just what kind of impact have, has that group had? Yeah, they've uh, they've done a good job of of providing. Uh, the depth that we need in our group to have success. Uh, you know, whenever we bring uh, freshmen in, and there's a lot of true freshmen in this group, uh, you know, the, the balance becomes, okay, how long does it take them to get acclimated to, to, to the play of uh, college hockey, yet the NCHC? And, and, uh, and when is that gonna take place? And sometimes it's longer for others. And, and this group here, they've dug in. When you look at guys like Mark Send and Jacob Bernard Dock or Jonathan Connick, Jasper Weatherby, those type of players, they've played some heavy minutes and they've contributed. And uh, again, it's nice to see that. And uh, that always doesn't happen. But I think it, it goes back to how they've invested in, their, in themselves, not only in the weight room and on the ice and practice, but the, the mental side of the game and preparing themselves on structure. Is Gavin Hayes still trying to get back to 100%? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. You know, uh, when he left, you know, he had some flu-like illness uh, when he was out of the lineup for a couple of weeks there. And, you know, he came back against Western. I thought he had good jump on, on the Friday game, but then I think he ran out of gas on Saturday. And I think that was uh, good for us to know how to handle those guys that come back from those situations, especially young guys. And uh, I thought, you know, this past weekend against Anchorage, he was better. And, you know, he's looking even better in practice. So, you know, his legs are coming and, and his conditioning is coming back here. But again, he wears his heart on his sleeves and he's, he's, uh, he's a warrior when it comes to uh, playing the game. Are any updates, injuries? Uh, not as of yet. And uh, uh, you know what? Uh, Nick Jones will be unavailable this weekend to play. That's all I can say. He'll be unavailable.